Are we seeing the dominoes start to fall? As I reported last week, there's a large bank drill, a scheduled outage for Bank of Oklahoma and its subsidiaries in the greater southwest region, as well as a scheduled maintenance, maintenance outage in New Zealand for SWIFT. More disturbing information has come to light. I resigned from my job on February 3rd. My 401k is being managed by New York Life, who proudly boasted at the rollover meeting they had on site in October that they provide real-time fund performance and therefore can initiate a release of funds within 48 to 72 hours of notification, notification of, of uh, severance by our HR department. When I contacted New York Life regarding my termination of employment, I was told that there's now a mandatory 30-day hold on all disbursements of funds. When I asked the rep why, he told me, I don't know. I contacted my HR benefits representative regarding this and was told, quote, we just received notification of this this week, end quote. Of course, I asked my HR rep for an explanation for the change in terms and was told, quote, they did not explain why, they just said that this was the new policy, end quote. A wall of ignorance seems to prevail in this regard. So what do we know? In addition, a Social Security drill is planned on February 15th through the 18th. This is a planned maintenance shutdown of the federal Social Security system. Coincidence? CMS, the U.S. Centers for Medicare and Medicaid, the lead Obamacare agencies, said the shutdown will prevent applicants from verifying their Social Security numbers and other data through the federal website, healthcare.gov. Also, Dan's bank locks out 10,000 customers out of their accounts. Up to 10,000 people could find their funds frozen if they fail to set up a new account with another bank. Large numbers of those who have already started the switching process are also set to be locked out of their accounts before the new accounts can be set up. A spokeswoman for the bank said, quote, yes, some will be locked out of their accounts, end quote. The bank said it was closing the current accounts, but it later conceded that it would allow these customers to use their debit and ATM cards over the weekend. However, by Monday, again, February 17th, the accounts will no longer operate. On January 24th, Supervisory Regulation SR 14-01 was issued in regard to the need for bank preparedness, particularly for the eight bank holding companies in the United States. According to this memo, there are eight bank holding companies that appear to be at risk and that that risk threatens the financial stability of the United States. Hmm. These eight companies are Bank of America, Bank of New York Mellon, PLC, Citigroup, Goldman Sachs, <clears throat> JP Morgan, Chase, Morgan Stanley, State Street Corporation, and Wells Fargo, the usual subs suspects. This memo was the first one of the year. It was sent from Michael Gibson to the top eight banks to stress increased supervisory expectations. Shortly after the increased supervision memo of the big eight, customers at other banks started getting notices of bank drills uh, where services will be limited. As I reported earlier, a similar email advisory went out to all of the customers at the Bank of Arizona, Bank of Oklahoma, and the Bank of Texas, which have all, all been noted as having this drill. The Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve issued the following advisory on January 24th. Subject guidelines, heightened supervisory expectations for recovery and resolution preparedness, i.e. cyber attacks. Applicability guidelines. This guidance only applies to the domestic bank holding companies. Uh, by the way, these are all the big eight banks uh, I mentioned earlier that may pose elevated risks to U.S. financial stability. The notice goes on to say that the supplement to SR Letter 12-17-CA Letter 12-14 Consolidated Supervision Framework for Large Financial Institutions, the Federal Reserve is issuing this letter to clarify the heightened supervisory expectations 
for recovery and resolution preparedness, or in other words, how to mitigate damages or losses to the Big A in the event of a cyber attack that may pose an elevated risk to U.S. financial stability. To compound the situation, Secretary Liu stated that U.S. borrowing power may not last past February 27th, as the U.S. is to run out of money by February 15th. There's that February 15th again. This would definitely indicate an act of desperation on behalf of U.S. solvency and thus justify a confiscation or a bail-in of individual American wealth to stymie a national default. The list of activities piling on to the February 15th date is growing by the day. The feds are encouraging the states to distribute unemployment benefits in the form of ATM cards. No more direct deposit. The contracts for the ATM unemployment benefits are being given to J.P. Morgan and Chase Bank predominantly. These ATM cards will also be subject to fees. Fees for balance inquiries, fees for ATM withdrawals, fees for insufficient funds, and transaction fees. I've spoken to several people in the past couple of months who have applied for unemployment. They've indicated that in some cases it's been over two months and they can't access their funds. The money, your tax dollars, have been deposited in these banks for the two plus months in question, but benefit recipients have been waiting two or more months to receive their ATM cards. They can't get the money out. And what are the banks saying about these delays? Quote, Due to severe weather conditions in some parts of the country, the mail has been delayed, end quote. Hundreds of millions of dollars are sitting in the coffers of these banks. Remember what we saw back in November with the EBT cards. They can be shut off, and they can shut off your unemployment ATM cards too. And last but not least, Congress just approved legislation to increase the debt limit with no restrictions through March of 2015. They've given themselves a blank check. This will open a Pandora's box of increased taxation on, and more capital controls on our money. This regime, as well as the others that have preceded it, have been milking the American people for everything and anything they can get their hands on. And when the cows can no longer produce milk, we will see the dairies turned into slaughterhouses. Reports of foreign combat-ready troops in America are growing by the day. What are they gearing up for in the presence of our eyes wide shut? In conclusion, it's obvious that something unprecedented is going on with the U.S. financial system. The U.S. has never, ever conducted these types of unprecedented disaster preparedness drills for said or unsaid cyber attacks. The powers that be are sending a clear and present warning that something is about to go down with our financial system. Escalating reports of the threat pro uh, proposed by the SEA are setting the stage for a false flag event involving a cyber attack of our financial system, which will ultimately be perpetrated by our own government via the powers that be. What I'll be doing is removing all but necessary funds to cover my outstanding EFTs for my automated bill pays on Thursday, February 13th. I'll wait and see what happens on the 26th, and at that time decide whether or not to redeposit my funds into my bank. What will you do? I look forward to your comments for discussion below. Thank you for watching, and please share this video with everyone now. Time is running out. If, if I've missed anything, please share your information uh, in the comments section below. And you may want to go to Courageous Nerds channel for continued coverage of these developments. The research links are provided for you in the description box below. Thank you.